Welcome to Reinvent Your Speaker Business Model. My name is Kadena Tate, and what I've learned in my 20 years of being self-employed is that no one should be able to convince you of anything or talk you into anything. You are the founder and the CEO of your company. So take what you need and leave the rest. Take the information into your business and test it out and try it out. Show up, tell the truth about where the leaks are in your time, your money, your energy, and so on. Ask for the support that you need, step outside of your comfort zone, and then do the work. And as you do the work, things are going to uncover and you will achieve a result. But the result is going to vary based upon who you are, what your work ethic is, and the systems that you're putting into place. So please know that I cannot make a guarantee that you're going to make seven figures in seven minutes. But what I can guarantee is that I am going to show up and tell you how to build a pleasurable and profitable business. And with that, let us begin. I want to welcome you. This particular conversation is designed to support you in reinventing your speaker business model. One of the things that I think is really, really important is that we know how to pivot. We know how to pivot. We know how to look at what's working offline and then navigate and move some of those things online. And the speaking piece is one of it. Because of COVID-19 and social distancing protocols, many of us have had to come online and we've had to learn how to replace a live event with a virtual event. You know, how to replace a face-to-face -face coaching session with an individual or group coaching session. We've had to learn how to run our association meetings, our conferences. We've had to learn how to do all of these things virtually. And that's what we're gonna talk about here today. So my name is Kadena Tate and I'm a contributing author to the book, Business Model U. If you are inside of the book, if you've purchased it and you go to page 155, you will see my purpose outlined. My purpose is to evolve the female entrepreneur so that she may turn her intellectual property into multi-generational wealth. Why the female entrepreneur? Well, if we look at the society as it's currently constructed, a woman primarily has been at home taking care of spouse, children, parents, siblings, and so on. She's been in the role of caregiver. So there's a lot of her intellectual property and a lot of her skill set that has fallen into the category of unpaid labor. And what I want to do is to support you in being compensated properly for the value that you bring. So we're going to start off with my favorite tool, the business model canvas. Why are we starting out with this particular tool? Well, one of the things that I believe mind, body, spirit, and soul is that we need to be good stewards of our resources, whether that's our time, our undivided attention, our intellectual property, you know, our relationships, our things. We need to become good stewards of them because we are leaders. Now, a business model canvas is specifically designed so that we have a shared way of describing how we're going to create a pleasurable and profitable business. If you are a creative person, you'll know that it's a lot easier if you draw a vision or you write the vision, and then you can see, hey, this is the direction that I'm headed in. So please take a moment when you look in your workbook, you're going to see a link to download the canvas. And I highly recommend that as we go along, you complete the canvas during this time so that at the end of it, you have a fully completed canvas and you walk away with the tool that allows you to describe, visualize, assess, and change if you need to the way that you create 
your product services programs and live events, the way that you deliver and serve your customer, the way that you ask for what you want, the way that you show people that you love them, you value them, you respect them, and you appreciate them. There's a lot of stuff going on in this society. You know, we're going to, I am an economics major. And so we're going to look at what is the effect of the macro environment. You already know that there's economic, demographic, technological, you know, natural and physical forces, political and legal forces, and social and cultural forces. So what does that mean in layman's terms? You're watching people experience devastating job losses. A lot of people have been with their companies for 20 and 30 years, and they're having to start over. You also see people marching in the street protesting, you know, the issues, whether it's police brutality, race, sex, gender bias, whatever it is, people are saying, no, we need to make a change in the way that we think and the way that we behave. We're also looking at climate change issues. We're looking at immigration issues. What do we believe that a country is? Is, you know, I believe that together we are stronger. So I think it's really important that we begin to look at how our business shows up in the community in which we live, work, and serve. We also need to look at, for those of you who are creating physical products, the raw material supply has been affected. There has been a disruption in the electronics value chain. And so you see prices going up, you see inflation rising, you see prices rising, and you see a lot of people in struggle. So you have to look at, can your ideal client use their discretionary income to make an investment in you and your product services and experiences? You also want to take a closer look at the micro environment, whether it's a customer, a supplier, a reseller. I don't believe in competitor, but I put the word there. But when I say competitor, I'm looking at someone who does something similar to you. Now, I personally believe authenticity has no competition. Nobody can do what you do in the exact way that you do it. And when you give yourself permission to be yourself without explanation, apology, justification, you are going to find that your business is going to shift and grow in wild and wonderful ways. And also we have to look at the general public because unfortunately people are not using their emotional intelligence. You know, they are, they are making irrational decision, uh, decisions based upon a minimal amount of information. And we have to take that into consideration. Why? Because those things affect the opening and closing of your business. You look at all of the mask mandates and the closure of schools, and you look at the restrictions that have been placed on not only domestic travel within the United States, but international travel. You know, we're looking at the fact that people are all over the internet talking about how frequently they bathe, so or don't bathe for that matter. So we're looking at how are we going to use face masks, toilet, toiletries, and hand sanitizers to keep our customers safe? Are we going to put social distancing measures in place? You know, are we going to be subjected to lockdowns and curfews? It's very important that you look at the environment that your business operates in and make the adjustments that are needed so that you can stay in business. Now, here's the number one thing that I can tell you is please do not attempt to replicate the offline experience as an inline experience. Why? Because people show up differently in person than they do when they're sitting behind their computer screens. When people are behind their computer screens, a lot of them act like little baby ninjas. You know, they're indecisive. They become um, voyeurs. You know, they, they're not necessarily showing up with full body transparency, vulnerability and authenticity online. And so with that said, I want you to go back in time 
when the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was delivering his iconic I Have a Dream speech. You know, there were 250,000 plus people on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial that day. So if you sit in the energy of that, watching that speech online or on television is not the same experience as standing next to someone, okay, in the presence of someone who is asking America to make real the promises of democracy. Now I am a veteran. So here's what I can tell you. The concept of freedom and the actual showing up to do the work that encourages freedom are two totally different things. So I think it's very important that you keep in mind there's a huge difference between looking at a product online and experiencing that the smell, the touch, the taste of the same product. Therefore, I'm going to say it to you again, do not attempt to replicate the in-person experience. Now, in this particular webinar experience, I'm going to ask you to focus your energy and effort on the learning style and buying behavior of an online learner. Remember, people who like to go to the movies get in their car and drive to the movie theater. People who don't stay at home and watch it on their TVs. Okay, it's a totally different way of showing up and being in the world. So, but no matter where you are, prospective clients are always listening to WIIFM, what's in it for me. But here's what I can tell you, because I've been in business a long time. I used to think that the customer was always right and we have to do everything for the customer. But what I can tell you is that you're going to have to learn how to set some boundaries because the relationship must be mutually beneficial or you are going to spin in and out of people pleasing perfectionist for excuse me perfectionism, proving, you know, doing all the things and then you're going to be resentful and exhaustion, depletion, overwhelm and anxiety and frustration. So this is a 3 in 1 webinar experience and as a result of our time together, my desire is that you discover how to align your business model, your value proposition, and your daily habits so that you can actually create a pleasurable and profitable business. Now we're going to kick this off with our value proposition. I think that it's really important for us to ask the question, what value do we create for our customer? Now, what I can say to you is this. The thing that a lot of people don't talk about is that there are four primary mindsets, if you will, around niche specialization. Number one is we're going to look at your motivation of the value proposition. Some of you want to be famous. You want to be known as an expert in your area of expertise. I need you to write down why. Some of you want fortune and, you know, commanding a higher price for your expertise because you're a recognized speaker, leader, celebrity brand. I want you to write that down. How much money do you want to make? The third thing is about choice, right? You became an entrepreneurial speaker, author, coach, and consultant because you want to do the work that you want to do instead of taking whatever comes along because you are a recognized and trusted speaker and leader. And then the fourth mindset is success. You know, you want to achieve your business and financial goals and maximize your potential in a way that feels like full body creative self-expression. That's on your side. That's cool. But here's the thing that I need you to understand. Your client doesn't care about none of that. Your client only cares about what are you going to do for me? You know, it kind of reminds me of that Janet Jackson song, what have you done for me lately? So the client, okay, has a whole lot of emotions and tolerations and things that they've been doing that are not working. 
The same way that you're here because you looked at your business and said, this is not the business I ordered. Let me create something different. They're saying, this is not the life that I ordered. Let me create something different. So they want to stop something and they want to start, achieve, or accomplish something else. Your job is to make sure that the experience of working with you helps them to feel positive emotion so that they can experience a positive outcome. There's something that they want to know from you. So you got to share your benefits. And then there needs to be transformation as a result of them giving you money for the sharing of your ideas. So they need to be able to do something different with ease. So this is an opportunity for you to take a moment and look at your worksheet, okay? And ask yourself the question, how do I desire to support my people? And how am I going to look under the surface for what's really going on? How do they want to be rewarded? What happens if they're indecisive? How do they want to be seen as a good person? You know, a human engaged in the art of do-goodery. Who are they jealous and envious of? Are they trying to keep up with the Joneses? Are they trying to look smart, sexy, younger, fitter? What's going on with them? And then where do they feel vulnerable? Where do they feel shame and guilt and embarrassment? And how can you help them move over that? So stop or pause and answer that question. One of the things that I want you to think about is a huge part of your value proposition is being able to transform uncertainty into opportunity for the client. But I believe that your business grows in relationship to your own personal development because the inner informs the outer. So I want you to go to the store, if you will, and buy a five subject notebook and then two single subject notebooks. The single subject notebook should be 99 cents a piece. Okay. And we'll go into shortly what you're going to do with those notebooks. But for right now, I want you in the five subject notebook, I want you to label your categories, the book of desires, the book of questions, the book of celebration, the book of possibility, the book of gratitude. And I'm sorry, it's three single subject notebooks. In the first single subject notebook, I want you to label it the book of upset. The second single subject notebook, I want you to label it community map. And the third single subject notebook, I want you to label it Book of Commerce. And we're going to go into this just a little bit because I have a free gift for you that I'll tell you about later that's going to help you delve a little bit deeper. But right now, I just want to give this to you because this is what's going to help you become the leader that you've been called to be so that you can have a business model that really honors the truth of you. Next, let's move on to the value proposition canvas. In your workbook, you're going to see a link to download a copy of the canvas. What I need you to know about this is there must be a product market fit. What do I mean by that? What that means is you have to have the right product, service, and program at the time that the customer needs it and at a price that they're willing to pay in order for the solution that you solve to match the product, the problem, or challenge, or desire that your ideal customer has. 
And here's the thing, when your customer, right, which is the circle, when they want to achieve something, it's gonna be under the jobs. What are the gains and what are the pains? Very few people wanna experience pain. So that means you have to have a pain reliever, okay? And a lot of people want to win. People are consumed with winning. So their gains, you better have something that helps them create more gains, right? Like a bodybuilder, help them strengthen their success muscles. Basically, your products and services must match, right? The problems, the challenges, the opportunities of the things that they desire, but here's what I can tell you that is, is a fun fact, because I have in the past, I've been very intellectual and I've experienced bankruptcy and foreclosure. And this is the reason why I was presenting facts without think, you know, without considering feelings. I thought everything was about the intellect and not the emotion, but people really are making their decisions rooted in emotion, even the most intelligent of them. Trust me, I'm an A student. I can tell you. People can know you like you trust you and still not conduct business with you. Because the truth is a lot of people don't care about facts, they care about how they feel. So if your presence, your product, your service, your experience makes them feel all the feel good feelings, whatever that means for that person, right? In simplest terms, I'm gonna say it makes them feel seen, heard, loved, valued, respected, appreciated cherished, cared for, you're going to win the business every time over someone who's being smart. Why? Because people can't relate to somebody who has it all together if their life is falling apart. So it's time for us to really look at people and their personalities and how can we be of the highest level of service, okay? So on a sheet of paper, I would like you to write down the name of your product, service, or program. And then I want you to write down, how does it make a person feel as a result of working with you? What are they now going to know and do differently? What's the transformation? What's the before, the during, and the after? Take a moment and write that down. Don't overthink it. You can fine tune it later. Like for example, when someone works with me, maybe they've been frustrated because they're sick and tired of individual coaching. So they come to me and when we're together, we create an association, an academy, a membership program, a mastermind program, a group coaching experience with the companion e-commerce store. So what did I just do? I just saved them time, money, energy, and resources. And now as a result, they have a new offer that's more in alignment with their desire to experience more freedom and more ease in their business. So what are they going to feel? They go from feeling overwhelmed to a feeling of joy. They go from feeling resentful to feeling supported. They go from feeling like they were spinning in and out of people pleasing and perfectionism, which is a feeling of being not good enough or not doing enough, to now knowing that they are truly in a mutually beneficial, loving, harmonious relationship where they feel valued, respected, and properly compensated. That's just to give you a little idea. So take a moment and write that down. Next, I want you to look at your customer segment. I think it's really important for people to look at the needs of their audience. Who are the people who need the message that you bring, right? Who, what's the specific group of people that you serve and sell to? 
where do you want to speak? Where do you personally want to speak? And I think it's really important that you get really clear, okay, really like crystal clear about who these people are. Who are the people that are going to be showering you with money? Who are the people who are going to be compensating you for the value that you bring? They come in many forms, many forms. But here's what I can tell you. When you look at your customer segment, Nobody is going to pay you $500 for a $50 solution. The bigger and more complex the problem, right? That's going to determine how the person sees you and how much money they give you. So choose your customer segment wisely. Look at their demographics, their psychographics. Look at their their lifestyle habits, you know, are they a decision maker or an influencer? Or are they the person that advises the decision maker or the, the influencer? What's keeping them up late at night with worry and anxiety? What are they frustrated about or hesitant about? What are their goals and responsibilities? What are their needs? What are their secret needs that they don't want to tell anybody that they need? You know, a lot of people want to feel important, but they'll never admit that. So how can you roll out the red carpet for them and make them feel like a superstar? Give people their flowers while they live. What are some of the objections that you're going to have to overcome about price, about time, about how you've package your solution. Where are they on the buyer's journey? Did they just now discover you or have they never heard of you? Have they heard of you and they've been on the fence and they've been watching you and they say stuff like, oh my God, I've been following you for 10 years. But if they've been following you for 10 years and they never made an investment in themselves through you, where is the gap in the communication? How will these people find you? Is it going to be those through social media? Is it going to be through your community map? You know, is it going to be through you leading a forum or participating in a forum? You know, what digital activities or non-digital activities are you going to speak at? Chambers of Commerce, Rotary Clubs, Kiwanis Clubs. Where are these people? This is about the actual speaker audience. And then what type of content are you going to need to create that is going to that will influence their purchase decision? Take the time, take about 15 minutes and fill this in. You know, I'm going to say to you, like from my clients who have membership programs and associations, one of the things that I say to them is you got to get into why are these people joining? Is it because they want networking? Do they want access to specialized or trendy information? Do they, do they want advocacy? Do they want to learn best practices in their profession? Well, your speaker needs to be speaking to that. You know, why are they leaving? Is it because of budget cuts? Is it because of lack of engagement? Because you're, you're a boring place to be. Is it because the dues are too high or too low? Is it because they no longer see the value, whether that's real or perceived? Write this down, take 15 minutes to do this. Pause this recording and take care of that. Okay, so you're back. I briefly mentioned the community map. The community map is the untapped gold mine of your business. Please understand there is a thing called six degrees of separation between you and the world. 
between you and the random movers and shakers in the world. 98% of my business is rooted in referral. So what I want you to know is that your presence matters, your words matter, your actions matter. This is why it's important that you remember that authenticity has no competition and you be yourself. So you're gonna take the next 15 minutes and you're going to write in your community map. You're gonna just list all the people that you know. Take one page a piece initially, jump a couple of pages because people are gonna to come to mind. You know at least 200 people. You might be thinking, you know, my family never supports me. Well, baby, your family are not your ideal clients, they're your family, okay? But they can refer you. They can spread the good news about you, okay? So lighten up. Stop beating up your family and friends, okay? Stop it. And really look at your audience, get your buyer, get your ideal client together so that you can ask them, hey, who do you know, right? Who's in the military or the government or in an educational setting who needs my blank, blank and blank product, service, program, experience, da, da, da. Get really clear. So take 15 minutes and just write out your list. Okay, so you're back. We're now going to talk about customer relationships. What I want you to know that everything that you want to accomplish will be accomplished with or through the aid of other people. I believe in share power. I don't believe in powering over people. Customer relationships are how you maintain and grow your relationship with your customer. I don't want people to do business with me because they feel forced into doing business with me. I think it's very important that you begin to recognize that a lot of people are looking for the key that unlocks the door of confusion. People want clarity. They don't know that's what they want. They don't wake up in the middle of the night and say, I need clarity. They wake up in the middle of the night and say, how am I gonna make payroll? You know, how am I going to get my health in order because my blood pressure is too high? How am I going to find the support that I need to get this project done? So I want you to begin to look at what systems you use for customer relationship management. I think it's important that you ask yourself, do you see people you know, as an opportunity for you to build trust and camaraderie? Do you see people as the friends that invest, if you will, in your upsell, cross-sell and downsell offerings? So you're standing on stage, for example, you're staying on stage and your speech is one revenue stream. Maybe people want to buy your PowerPoint slides and a recording, okay? Maybe there's a series of facilitator or training materials that are our companion as a cross sell. Maybe you have books and workbooks and t-shirts and pins and other promotional items as a downsell. What's your strategy within that relationship to give them what they need? When people make a purchase with you, do you treat them like a one night stand and you just take their money and keep it moving? Or do you take the time to really deepen and maintain a harmonious relationship? Do you try to build community? I believe that as entrepreneurs, we need to know what a network is, how to grow and massage that network and how to monetize that network. You know, so that means you're gonna have to learn how to ask for what you want, which means you need a strategy for acquiring new speaking engagements. 
excuse me, you need a strategy to track incoming leads, ongoing relationships, and potential speaking opportunities that are going to flow through your sales pipeline. So write down the answers to these questions so that you can gain the clarity that you need on how you're going to maintain and grow your relationship with your customers. How are you going to be the key that unlocks the door of confusion? One of the things I think is critical is that we understand how we are to deliver value to our people, how we deliver the value. You know, do you want someone to find you through digital media? Do you know, like, for example, you want them to hear your voice in an audio blog and then hire you to be a voiceover artist? Do you want them to listen to your podcast and then decide to become a sponsor? Do you want them to watch your videos, whether it's in a blog or email or webinar, and then hire you to con consult, speak, or train for their organization? Do you want people to discover you through a physical invitation in the mail? Are you going to host free or paid virtual or in-person events? Are you going to pick up the phone and call the people in your community map in a word of mouth marketing campaign? Okay. Do you want people to see you on traditional media? Do you want them to turn on the TV and waha, there you are. Do you want them to listen to the radio? Woo, there you are or see you in a newspaper or magazine, that's part of your strategy. You're gonna to have to get busy creating a publicity plan. A lot of people talk about how social media is free. That's not true. Social media will cost you a huge amount of your time and your intellectual property. And a lot of people don't understand that you're giving tremendous value when you're on Clubhouse, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, YouTube, and so on. So it's very, very important that you're not just posting randomly, right? There has to be a sales funnel involved so that you can navigate value through the channel and it leads into a paying customer. And of course, if you want voiceover gigs, you're going to have to look at having conversations to peop with people who have audio books or apps or commercials, film, TV, radio, theater, video games, et cetera. And a lot of people are terrified of video, but let's keep it real. Video is the closest thing to an offline speaking experience. So whether they're pre-recorded or live, give yourself <laughs> like full permission to be, un to be yourself without apology. I cannot emphasize this enough. Look at your worksheet and check off one of these that you are willing to commit to for the next 90 days. And if you have a team, select three. There are a lot of moving parts, if you will, similar to puzzle pieces to grow yourself and your business. So you have to ask yourself, what do I need? What are the assets that I need to create, offer, and deliver value to the customer segment? You cannot be in every box of your organizational chart. So do you require salespeople or staff? And if so, who specifically and what are their roles and responsibilities? What physical aspects are required so that you can run your speaker business? Do you need a Mac? Do you need a lighting kit? Do you need a snowball mic? 
Do you need an external disk drive? Do you need an office, a desk? Do you need office space? If you're going to be speaking in corporations, I highly recommend that you have a conversation with an intellectual property attorney about licensing and ask the question, how can licensing help me to leverage you know, my value proposition? I wanna reach new markets. I wanna serve more people. I wanna take the information that I possess and I wanna package it in multiple forms into audio, video, multimedia experiences. And then what financial resources are required? How much money do you need? This is where a lot of people step in it. Too many people, I would say, don't understand that there are three places you can be, the land of not enough, just enough and more than enough. And what I can tell you from personal experience is that not enough, I'm sorry, just enough always turns into not enough. So you don't just say, hey, should I price this at such and such? Look at what does it cost you to make it? What's the time investment, the labor investment, the materials investment? Because I'm gonna tell you right now, a lot of people are running out of business because they don't have the money needed to own and operate their business, okay? Do you need webinar software? Right now we're using Zoom. There is a cost to using it. Yes, you can use the free version, but let's keep it real. You're gonna run your business with a whole bunch of free tools forever. Doesn't quite work like that. I wish it did. Doesn't quite work like that. It's not the society that we're in. So take a moment and identify your answers to these questions. When you go back home, sit with your team, gather together and say, hey, what do we need to be able to deliver the most amazing wow experience to our customers? What do we need? What assets do we need? A lot of people are not making money in their business because they are focused on the wrong activities. What I can tell you is this, the Pareto principle, which says that 20% of your activities will yield 80% of the results. I think that's true. And I also think that what it does not address fully from an entrepreneurial lens is that you don't have to do all the things, okay? The thing that you have to do as the speaker to own and operate a pleasurable and profitable speaking business is you have to cultivate the courage to lead, teach, influence, and inspire. Okay, you have to develop the skill set to run a business like a business. And obviously, you have to present whether you're going to speak, train, or facilitate. However, there are a myriad of other activities that must be done to make your business run. And they are important but that does not mean that you have to do them. You will need a team to support you. You yourself cannot be, as I said before, in every box of your organizational chart. If you are the person who is doing all of your own administration, you're coordinating, handling the logistics and promoting your events through inbound and outbound marketing. You're doing the content strategy, the content creation and the content promotion. You're engaged in event planning. You're doing all the selling and the customer service and you're pack creating man packaging, manufacturing and distributing your speaker products, whether it's an audio product, a video product, 
a physical printed product like a workbook or a journal. Come on now, you can't do all the things. Take yourself off of team too much. <laughs> Take Because I was there, y'all. This is why I'm telling you, listen to me. Don't do what I did. I tried to do all the things, right? I was raised in a military household and, you know, I had this really dysfunctional relationship with doing. This is your opportunity to use your tools to transform uncertainty into opportunity by learning how to negotiate and delegate and hire. Okay. It's very important that you look at who's accountable and responsible for what and what does progress and success look like? Because these things have to be done with consistency, right? You've all been somewhere where, you know, say you go to this restaurant, right? And it's like, the food is amazing, amazing. The service is amazing. And then you have to go to the bathroom and the bathroom is nasty. Just come on now. You're like, come on, people. Let's get some congruence here. Okay, it's the same way with us. We just got to do better. So what are the tasks that are required of you? I want you to write, check off those. And then what are the tasks that you need to outsource? And maybe you need to raise your prices so that you can afford to pay some people. Okay, and don't give me that. Nobody can do it as well as I can do it. That's a bunch of nonsense. We got 8 billion people on planet Earth and not one person knows everything about everything. Not one person can do all the things. This is not how it works. We're here because together we're stronger. Okay, together we can support each other. We can help each other feel seen and feel heard and be witnessed and be encouraged and be inspired. We're not here to power over one another. We're here to grow together. Go download, go to my website, kadinatate.com, go to the shop and download my free workbook called The Eight Tools of Business Sovereignty. It's, you know, what I'm going to provide to you, and I really can't spell y'all. Oh my gosh, it's so embarrassing. The eight tools of business sovereignty comprise eight business and leadership practices to grow a pleasurable and profitable business. Yes, I can spell. I sure can. But right here in this instance, it didn't show it, right? But mistakes are made. We're not perfect people. There used to be a time when I would have shut this entire presentation down so that I could fix it and start recording all over again. We're not doing that today. Because here's the thing, the words that are coming out of my mouth have value. And what I want you to know is that I do lead, teach, influence, and inspire, and so can you. Mistakes and all, be unapologetically you. So for those of you who feel like keyboard ninjas and you wanna send me a message, Save yourself from yourself because your girl is free. I already spent 56 years spinning in and out of perfectionism, people pleasing, proving and trying to do all the things and I'm free now. So if you want to experience freedom within your own life, get the free gift. Like I said, you cannot do all the things there. You're going to have to have key partners. You're going to have the team of people, whether it's individuals or companies that provide you with the support services and resources that you will need to create and grow a successful speaking business. Take a moment now to check off who is going to help you grow your speaking business. And then what you're going to do is go back over to your community map and you're going to put these people's names in there. And then you're going to go over to your book of questions and you're going to write down specifically the questions that you have for these people or about these people or about the service that they offer 
or the questions that you have. So for example, for example, okay, on-demand publishing and distribution, maybe you wanna use Vervanti or maybe you wanna use Mimeo or maybe you wanna use Lulu, but you have questions. What's the format? What's the best approach? How do I do it? How do I lay it out? Do you have a template for my books, a CD, a DVD? What are the hot selling and best selling information products? Should I sell a line of greeting cards or thank you cards? Do I need to create a calendar or a journal for my clients? Would my clients benefit from having t-shirts and pillows and phone cases and so on? Write the questions down. You don't have to have the answers. The purpose is to catalog your questions instead of having everything on little pieces of paper all over the place. This is a place where you can put everything in writing. Also, in your book of possibility, what are the brilliant ideas that you hold about how you can work more efficiently and effectively and joyfully with your team members? What are the magic and miracles that you and your graphic designer and web designer and illustrator can create? Do you need a personal trainer so that you look and feel your best when you meet with your stylist? If you feel like you have a speech impediment or you're not communicating in the way that you want, hire a speech coach or a voiceover coach. Instead of spending hours of time editing videos and audios, hire people who you know, are proficient and efficient in production. You're probably wondering why is Toastmasters down there? Well, this is one of my tools that I've used to get speaking engagements at organizations. I've joined the Toastmasters Club at companies so that I can go over there and get in and then I would align all of my speeches to the needs of that company. It's time for you to just get really clear, you know, what do I need? What do I need? And who are the people who can support me? People want to support you. They want to see you win. They really do. But you got to be visible and then you have to ask for the support that you need. That's the uncomfortable piece. But you can move out of your comfort zone. I know you can because you're here with me. And that's exciting. <laughs> There are so many things that can eat away your little dollars. So you got to look at the cost. You know, where do you need to make an investment in yourself in order to grow your business? What are the costs associated with owning and operating your speaking business? I can tell you right now, you know, what has helped me tremendously is to have a little manila folder envelope. Okay, and it, you know, I put Monday and then whatever the first Monday of that week is, and then all the receipts for that week go in that envelope. And then on Saturday or Sunday, right, sit down and go ahead and run them through my accounting program so that I'm keeping up with how much things cost. Like, this is really important, you know. Sometimes we forget that to calculate the cost. And sometimes, by the way, the costs are not always in terms of money. Sometimes the cost is in terms of your energy, right? Maybe you have been spending five hours doing something that you could have paid somebody who was a professional in that area. They could have got it done in 45 minutes. Okay, it's very, very important that you count the cost of your time, your money, your energy. It's important that you look at fixed cost versus variable cost. Some of you pay for web hosting, you know, or say you have Adobe stock or the Adobe suite like I do, you pay for it annually. Some of you pay for it monthly. Are you keeping up with this? 
you know, are you keeping up with this? Ask yourself, you know, what are the main methods that I can calculate my business cost? And then get a really good accountant, okay, who can help you minimize these costs and minimize the effects of taxation and inflation. Your business must make a profit. It must make a profit. Because here's the thing, without a profit, it's just a matter of time before you go out of business, okay? So your revenue streams specifically are going to represent the cash intake into your business. What I can tell you is that you can make money before, during, and after the event. So for example, before an event, you have advertisers and vendors, affiliate commission, event um, admission, plus bonuses, right? People sell VIP seating. They sell um, you know, uh, VIP luncheons, sit at my table with me, you know, people have ex um, exhibitors and sponsors, and of course your speaker fee, right? You can't speak everywhere for free, <laughs> right? And then during the event, you can sell a ticket to a future event, or you can sell promotional products. You might give a couple of samples in a swag bag, or, you know, run a raffle and, and give out t-shirts and mics and light kits and a whole assortment of other things to the people, whether it's a digital product or a physical product. And of course, you can also partner with affiliates and you can earn commissions on their products and services. And then after the event, you can sell coaching, consulting, speaker, and or training. But here's what I want you to know, no matter what you choose, they all are gonna pretty much fall into seven, uh, seven categories, whether it's the sale of an asset, right? product, service, program, et cetera, usage fee, subscription fee. Are you going to lend, lease, or rent certain things out? Are you going to license? You're going to use brokerage fees or advertising. You know, you can have, what, one of my favorite things is your workbook for your speaker event. You can ask other people to advertise in that workbook, and that's a new form of revenue for you. Just remember the sky is the limit. You don't have to ride around in a, a car with one wheel, that's your job. You can have multiple streams of income. You can create that and grow that for yourself. Yes, you can. Now, what I want you to know is I believe in multiple streams of income, like mind, body, spirit, and soul. And I feel like as a speaker, before you jump on any stage, I think it's important for you to map out if you start off with the speaker centric business model, right? And you're going to do webinars and tele seminars and virtual conferences online, or maybe you started off offline and you were doing live events, you were doing boot camps and workshops and seminars and conferences and trade shows. Where are those same type of events online? Okay. And then what you can do is you can weave in some elements. So you were standing on stage speaking and you noticed from this particular conversation that there's a necessity for you to create your own online academy or offline academy or licensing and certification program because the people let you know because of their interest. They were like, oh my God, I love this. Can I teach this too? And maybe some people were like, man, I want to go wherever you go. You want to go on an adventure trip. You want to go on a retreat, a cruise. I'm there. Let's go. I want to spend time with you because you are too much fun. Right? Or maybe there are people who they enjoy reading. They enjoy consuming information that's published. Maybe you have an app or some software or you're offering software as a service, right? Maybe you have some type of um, app around the management of money, you know, or you have an app that helps them with their funnel, or you have a card deck, 
This is all money made after you speak or an extension of your speaking. You have people who are like, look, I, I can't learn everything in 30 minutes, 45 minutes, two hours. I need more time. Do you have a 90 day coaching program? You can create an individual or group coaching experience. You can also, if you don't want to have to give out all the information and be the smartest person in the room, you can have a mastermind. You can host VIP days where you work exclusively with people, you know, highly customized experience. You can also take people from sitting in your audience and ask them to join your association or your membership program. And then finally, but certainly not the least important thing is once you speak, you may find that there's an opportunity for you to do a TV or radio show to extend the conversation. Or perhaps you can do a one woman show, a short film or documentary. Maybe you can do a video summit where you're interviewing other people. You can also sell your photographs, your music and your other artistic creations to create multiple income streams. So right now, what I'd like you to do is in your book of desires, write down what you want. How do you want to create money? In your book of brilliant ideas, write down some ideas that you have around creating that money. In your book of gratitude, express gratitude for the fact that you're even a person who has big dreams and big goals. In your book of celebration, celebrate yourself. Celebrate your wins and successes. And in your swamp book, write down all of your messy feelings. You know, I don't feel creative. I don't feel like I'm enough. I'm doing too much. Like get all the whining, bitching and complaining out of your system in your swamp book. In your book of commerce, put these ideas down and look at how much money do you wanna make from this and what are you willing to do in exchange? Sky is a limit, ladies, sky is a limit. I have three questions for you. Okay, I want you to clean up your buyer persona and I want you to map out your buyer journey. And then I want you to ask yourself, what's the transformational benefit that they receive from attending your event? Because yeah, you can get people pumped up, fired up, inspired, et cetera. But what transformation occurred? In this event, when you came here, you didn't have a written business model canvas and value proposition canvas. And now you do. Prior to coming here, you may not have had clarity around the direction you want to take your business or the opportunities that were even available to you. And now you do. Question number two is how might you create an experience that facilitates community while also providing relevant content? Remember, you don't have to be the smartest person in the room. You can create a mastermind and highlight and showcase and spotlight the wisdom of your members, of your community. How can you do that? Put your ego to the side. There are people smarter than you and that's okay. But the reality is nobody knows everything about everything. Which leads me into question three. In what ways does your online experience create a sacred container for communicating your value while at the same time facilitating connection, conversation, collaboration, and conversion? One of the things that I definitely have learned is that there are so many wonderful people in my audiences that I'm going to connect with. And some people are going to be like, oh, no, child, you are not the one. And that's okay, too. Because I can't be the one for everybody, right? It's 8 billion plus people. So when you connect with somebody, do you want to have surface level conversations or deeper, deep dive conversations? I'm a deep diver, right? Because that's what's going to help me determine whether or not I want to collaborate with you. And obviously, if we're going to form a collaboration, the way that we convert an audience, right, that has to be in alignment as well. See, because here's the thing, every business has a model and it's the foundation that you're going to create for your company to be successful. And some models, quite frankly, are better than others. But here's what I know with absolute certainty. Some models will make or break your business. 
So the entire purpose of our time together has been to remind you to craft a clear and compelling vision of your business operation, because I don't want you to waste or lose huge amounts of time or energy or money for that matter. So whether you're a coach, a consultant, a speaker, or a trainer, my desire is that you're walking away from today's experience, understanding what is required to create a pleasurable and profitable business model. And if you need further support, please enroll in the business model audit because I'm happy to support you, right? In ensuring a strong value proposition alignment between your offer and the needs of your audience in addition to what is actually required of you to design a business that loves and support you. I don't want you to do what I did, right? Which is try to do all the things and then spend in the depletion, exhaustion, overwhelm, anger, resentment, frustration, burnout. It's not, it's not necessary. Help is available. My name is Kadena Tate. I'm so thrilled that you've joined me today. Please visit my website. Take that deeper dive if it's calling you, if you feel the invitation. And I'm looking forward to helping you to grow a business that's pleasurable and profitable. Let's connect. You can find me most active on Instagram. It's going to keep it 100. I am on Twitter. Sometimes I tweet out to my tweet hearts. I have a real business and a real life, so I'm not online all hours of the day and night. I'm occasionally on Facebook, but I'm definitely on Instagram. You can contact me, right, for any business monetization inquiries. You have my phone number, my email address, and my website. I look forward to getting to know you better, and I thank you so much for your time, your undivided attention, the sharing of your hopes, dreams, and aspirations. And from whatever walk of life you come, coach, consultant, speaker, trainer, my desire for you is perfect health, lavish wealth, loving, harmonious relationships, and the freedom of creative self-expression. Blessings to all.